Hello friends, now let us take a brief recap of the feedbox problem that we have been solving in the previous class. So we started off with the design problem to design a feedbox of range S from 1.11 mm per revolution in two stages with a phi of 1.41. Okay. So we started off with the basics of find, finding the range ratio of the feedbox and we did that by finding uh, the S max and S min and the range ratio comes out to be 11.1. .1. From this we found out the total number of speeds uh, by using this formula which comes out to be 7.98 and the Z is assumed to be 8 speeds. So basically the problem comes down to getting 8 speeds in 2 stages for the given feed range uh, uh, given the using uh, the phi of 1.41. Then we went ahead <coughs> and found out uh, what were the possible structural formulae and we did that elaborately and we found out that Z is uh, 2142, 2441 and so on so forth. Okay. We also went ahead and uh, drew all the different structural diagrams um, and <coughs> we found that at the end the diagram A with 2 1 and 4 2 is one of the most optimum diagram. We found out the diagram is optimum by finding out what is the maximum transmission range of the feed box for all the diagrams and it is from 5 raise to 6 to 5 raise to 4. Uh, so these were the maximum transmission ranges and then we went ahead with the uh, inequality of that the 5 raise to 6 should be less than 14 which is the range ratio for a feed box and then we found out that all the phi's uh, were admissible because all the phi's were actually less than uh, 1.41 so that is fine so you see that the phi is 1.55 2.41 2.41 and 1.41 so our selected value of 1.41 fits all the diagrams so we went ahead and applied the second criterion and the second criterion was x1 is less than x2 okay so if you go ahead and see this you can see x1 less than x2 is followed by diagram a and diagram c so how to select uh, one finalist so we found that diagram a is the one which is the best because here you can see the speed on shaft 2 is higher than the speed on shaft 2 of diagram c uh, why is this required because a speed which is higher will automatically translate into a lower torque and a lower torque means that the shaft diameter can be designed with a lesser diameter and uh, that obviously helps in uh, cost savings when it is scaled up uh, and put into mass production. So we find that the speed which is the highest, the lowest speed on this is higher than on diagram C. So therefore we go ahead and select diagram A which is the most optimal structural diagram to design our feed box. Now after finding and zeroing in on the most ideal structural diagram, the next aspect is obviously to draw the speed chart uh, and here we will call it the feed chart because we are dealing with feeds. Uh, in order to draw the speed chart or a feed chart, the most important thing is we have to first of all find what are the RPMs. Now let us investigate if we are dealing with RPMs or not. If we go to the basic design problem we see here that we are talking about linear feed ranges because the unit is mm per revolutions. So we have not yet found out what will be the rpm on stage 3 or on the last shaft. Um, in the previous cases we had rpms ready made, we already had the rpms. But here in the feed box designs we first have to find out the rpms on the last stage of the feed box before we can go ahead and start drawing the feed chart. So this is one of the most important criteria and this is where this diagram uh, or the determination of the feed chart is slightly different from the uh, finding out of the speed chart uh, in a regular gearbox design. So in order to find out 
the rotations or the RPM of the third stage of the feed box, it is necessary to understand the entire gearing diagram. So let us focus on this gearing diagram first. Uh, the most important uh, part of this gearing diagram is this axis right here. This axis is the axis on which your lathe jobs uh, will be basically turned. Okay, so this is a very important axis. Uh, so your tool path will ultimately be parallel to this axis. Okay, so your carriage will have to move in this direction. Okay, so the motion of this carriage will be um, either forward or reverse along this particular axis. Uh, so the feed is how many mm the carriage moves along this axis per rotation of the spindle. Okay. So the power obviously as we said has to be taken from the spindle because the spindle rotates at a certain RPM and the feed has to be correlated and in sync with that rotation. So we take a gear from the um, uh, last shaft of the main gearbox. Uh, to get the power for the feed box. So it starts uh, with this and I will explain uh, this kinematic gear train in just a while but right now we will see how this gear train is actually working. Uh, so the power is taken from the main spindle and it is given to uh, your feed box through uh, a gear train which is like this. So it comes from this gear pair and it is given to another gear pair which is 25 and 62. Uh, and then it is transferred to a third gear pair which is 32 and 42 and then the power is given to the first stage of your feed box. So in the structural diagram we have stage 1 and stage 2. Uh, so now we are at the beginning of this first stage. So you can see here this is shaft 1, shaft 2 and shaft 3 of your feed box. So in the first stage, if you uh, carefully remember, we have two speeds uh, which are one spaced apart. So we will just see the number of speeds. So you can see two speeds are obtained by this gear pair and obviously when this composite gear moves downward direction, uh, you will see that the speed will be obtained by uh, this second gear pair. Okay. So here you can see these are the two gear pairs which are meshing to give you the two speeds of stage number one. Regarding stage number two, we find there are four speeds. So again, these four speeds will be obtained by these four gears. So one may get the obvious question as how is it possible to transmit the power when all the four gears are meshing simultaneously? So that must be the question that must be coming in your mind. So this has to be properly elaborated. Please understand that all these four gears, uh, even though they mesh at the same time, they do not transmit power to shaft number three simultaneously. There is an internal lever mechanism which allows only one pair to be uh, giving trans transmitting power to shaft 3 at a time. Uh, so this lever when it is uh, switched in this one, so the, the first pair will be transmitting the gears. When this lever is shifted downwards, we find that now the second gear pair is transmitting the speeds and the power. When this again lever moves to the third one, third stage, then the third gear pair transmits power and so on and so forth. So uh, even if it appears that all four gears are meshing at the same time, actually the power is being transmitted by only one gear and the other gears are simply freewheeling. Um, <clears throat> at a later stage, uh, I will be showing you the internal construction of this. But this knowledge should, uh, should actually suffice for right now. So now we have seen that in the first stage we have got two speeds and in the second stage we have got four speeds okay so four times two now we have got the eight speeds these are the speeds that are uh, obtained and these are the number of speeds that we had calculated and these are required for our feed box now after uh, having these eight speeds this shaft three uh, is connected 
to a worm and a worm wheel which is depicted right here as i said we had discussed even before uh, that the rpm of the spindle is relatively higher while the feed that is required on a typical lathe is very less so there has to be a very heavy reduction uh, before it can be the rotary motion can be trans uh, transmitted into linear motion and this heavy reduction is achieved by this uh, single start worm or a worm and a worm wheel type of gearbox so here you can see the rpm uh, or the rotation from this third shaft is fed to this single start worm this worm is meshing with a worm wheel so this worm wheel is the outer diameter that can be seen right here this worm wheel uh, as i said rotates very slowly uh, the worm rotates at higher speed worm wheel rotates at a very slow rate and this worm wheel is connected to a, a pinion which is given by this internal diameter so the pinion as well as the worm are coaxial please do not forget they are coaxial and therefore whatever rotation is given to the worm wheel is transmitted to the pinion uh, finally in the last stage the pinion actually meshes with a rack which is depicted right here so this is the rack right here so the rack and pinion help to translate the rotary motion into a linear motion so therefore when this spindle rotates the power is given the rotary power is given to the first stage of your gearbox and after uh, multiplying into eight speeds the power is given to the worm and worm wheel the worm wheel gives the power to the pinion the pinion gives power to the rack and that is how a linear motion is obtained uh, from the starting rotary motion of our uh, main gearbox one question that may come in your mind <clears throat> is obviously that uh, why does uh, this this worm and worm wheel gearbox why is it placed after the feed box which basically multiplies the speeds the answer is pretty simple um, the rpm or the torque requirements uh, before the worm wheel are very less because if you can see uh, the shafts 1 2 3 they rotate at a relatively higher speed and when they rotate at a higher speed uh, obviously the torque on those shafts is very less so after the speeds are separated then the torque reduction can be done if this worm and worm wheel were placed at the input the only problem would have been the design of these shafts shaft 1 shaft 2 shaft 3 and also these gears would have to be unnecessarily very heavy so uh, therefore it is very very important uh, to have this worm and worm wheel after the feed box and not before it thank you